no matter how you first heard about the Jersey Shore, whether you've been coming here with your family for generations or whether you found out about it by that terrible TV show that is thankfully no longer around on MTV, the Jersey Shore, everything down here tends to get lumped in together. But in today's video, I want to walk you through why Ocean City keeps coming up year after year in a ton of different news articles, categories of the best places to live, top Airbnb destinations, and so much more. I'm going to walk you through on a map and talk you through everything within town, what's in the proximity, and what makes Ocean City so darn special. Let's dive in. All right, so if you're not familiar where Ocean City is in the state of New Jersey, looking at a map, we're going to start on the macro level and we are going to work our way down. So Ocean City is down here near the southern tip of the great state of New Jersey. Now, one of the things that makes Ocean City such a draw for so many people is because of the proximity, not just to Philadelphia, but other major metro areas as well, like Washington, Baltimore, and New York. And the reach of Ocean City has gotten even further beyond that. Now we're seeing buyers coming from Connecticut, from Rhode Island, from further down south. So it really is a unique unicorn of a place compared to all of the others. And let's dive into exactly why. Now, with the proximity, not just to those cities, but the general isolation, all things considered, from the rest of what people think of as the normal world, it really is an escape. So crossing through the vastness of southern New Jersey, if you've made the trip before, it is a totally different feel than once you finally do get across these bridges onto any of these islands. And it really does feel like a getaway, despite still being in New Jersey. So Ocean City and these other surrounding communities, they all have their own flavor. They all have their own culture. And that's what makes really the Jersey Shore a fit for everybody in some way, shape, or form. You just need to find your town. So while I grew up in Ocean City and while I specialize in Ocean City, I'm familiar with everything up and down this part of the coast um, and what makes them all so different. But again, today, I just want to focus in on Ocean City. So one of the questions that I get most often has to do with the different parts of town. So I'm going to walk you through in detail with a little crude drawing, so bear with me, exactly what delineates what, what's different um, about each part of town and where you should focus. Um, if you're looking for a primary residence, it's probably going to be a different area than if you're looking for an investment slash second home, which may be different than you're looking for just a second home. So down in the north end of the island, we have what is lovingly called the gardens. So the gardens is this prestigious part of town all the way on the north end. Um, it is the most expensive area on the island, bar none. Now, what makes that area so unique and so coveted is a few things. So number one, we have huge lot sizes. And bear with me because this tool is new to me. And I'm figuring it out on the fly. So if you're familiar with Ocean City at all, and even if you're not, if you look over here on the left-hand side, everything is a grid pattern. The island is very easy to navigate. But once you get down to the garden section, it can confuse the heck out of people. And people do get lost down there because you came from the grid into these winding areas. Um, but it really is a cool developed area with a lot to offer. Now, Gardens Parkway here it, right down the middle is the main divider between what we call the East Gardens, which obviously is on the east side, the ocean side, and the West Gardens, which is on the bay side. Now, down here, it's primarily single family homes. You're not going to run into any condo complexes at all, um, but you will find a few duplexes strewn throughout here, but they're really rare. So this is a heavily single family area. Um, there are not a lot of rental properties back here. There are some, don't get me wrong, um, but that's not the focus of the people who tend to gravitate towards this area. This is a good mix, a healthy mix of year round population as well as strict second home use. Um, I'm not personally aware of any investors who target this area because the return on their investment just simply isn't going to be there because the prices are elevated. Now, the beaches down here, as you can see the shape here, this is a very unique opportunity and experience that you won't get on the rest of the beaches on the island. A lot of people come down here to surf fish because with the inlet um, between Longport and Ocean City, there's some pretty good fishing down here. Um, but beyond that, there are some good surf beaches, uh, Waverly Beach here being the primary one down here um, that also is guarded for the most part. So 
there's a lot to like about this area. Um, but the gardens, a lot of people think it's because of the amount of trees that are there. And while that's true, there are definitely a lot more areas of greenery down here um, on individual properties than you'll see on the rest of the island. That's not the original intent of uh, where that name came from. It came from the Gardens Development Corporation who developed the gardens way back in the day. So again, the gardens is a prestigious area. Um, it is coveted by families who have been there for generations, and it's very hard to find your way into this area um, unless you have a lot of money that you're willing to spend um, compared to what you can get value-wise across the rest of the island. Now, if we back out a little bit, the next area that that's going to take us to is the North End. Now, the North End, contrary to popular belief, um, actually ends at Battersea Road. So I'm going to draw here. It goes from Battersea Road all the way to 6th Street. So this whole area, bay front excluded, that's its own little pocket. This is what we call the North End. Now, the North End is a great area for families, uh, primarily, especially whether you're renting or not. This is an area that is unique. So it's elevated um, compared to a lot of the southern portions of the island. I know flooding can be a big concern for a lot of people when they're buying here. Um, that's one of the primary questions that I get, whether it's on a property or a part of town, which area is safest from flooding. North End is pretty high. Gardens is very high. Um, there are parts of the North End here close to the beach that were not even touched in Hurricane Sandy. So with that aside, this is where you start to get a lot of restaurants sprinkled in. Um, you're gonna get a lot of shops. Uh, downtown Asbury starts right at the cusp here on 6th Street, but we do start the boardwalk here, um, right down on North Street. So the boardwalk is second to none. Um, anything that you have seen or maybe haven't about the Ocean City Boardwalk, it's highly, highly rated, not just in the state of New Jersey, but on the whole East Coast. It's a great experience. I will have a separate video at some point focused just on the boardwalk. It's too much to talk about in here, but this is a great area. Um, I know a couple of people and have helped some clients buy down in this particular, uh, we call it the 800 block, these long blocks, some realtors and listings called beach block. That's one of my pet peeves. It's clearly not the beach block. That would be the 900 block here um, on the other side of Corinthian Avenue, but Back to what I was talking about, uh, they absolutely love it here. So you have a blend, it's pretty quiet down here. You can still walk to town. The beaches are uh, very, very good. Now these can get narrow. Um, the North End here in general, when we do have our nor'easters, our heavy storms that we get throughout the winter, the North End tends to take the brunt of the hit. Um, so those beaches will erode faster than what you'll see on the larger South End and Gold Coast beaches. So fortunately, we do have replenishment that happens every one to two years, um, and we bring the beach back. So you have to go with the fluctuations there as it goes, but um, if what beach you want to be on is important to you, um, I do have a list of all the different beaches, which ones have outfall pipes, which ones have jetties, which ones are carded, all that stuff. But anyway... In the North End, this is where we start to get into some sports fields. Uh, the park here over by the Tabernacle is a great spot where people like to, whether it's walk, just relax, um, take the dog through there. One little hidden gem of a park, no pets allowed in here, is Lake Memorial Park. Very, very quiet, heavily shaded, a lot of great mature trees in there. Um, I know my kid and his friends, and when uh, school lets out here in the primary school, it's a hit uh, with them to go play in get out some more energy after school. But we have the skate park down here. Um, again, from a school standpoint, we didn't even touch on that. Uh, Ocean City has such a great school system. It's a public school system. Um, there are private options all around the island, um, but not on the island. So if you have any questions about school system, again, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to talk about that as a product of the school system. Um, I have nothing but great things to say personally. Now, if you are, again, looking for a blend of second home use and rental income, the North End is a good spot to start. But that pales in comparison to what we call the central part of town. Now, the central part of town goes up to roughly 18th Street, which is all the way down here, and covers all the way back to 6th Street. So this is a huge area here. 
and there's a lot going on here. And this is the heart of town. This is where all the action is. Some people absolutely love it and they never leave this pocket. Some people prefer to stay on the edges and only come down from time to time, whether that's take the boardwalk, grab a bite to eat, whatever the case is. But um, if you are looking from a year round standpoint, most of the year at round hers, I should say, um, and this is actually the area where I grew up, live back off of Bay Avenue. And I'm going to draw this. Really, it starts at about 10th Street. And I'm going to draw down Bay Avenue. And we're going to keep going through the Riviera. We'll get to this part of town next. But a lot of year-rounders do live back here. Now, we're not as scared of flooding because we've grown up with it. We're used to it. Um, but it, it can happen back in some of these areas, but not all. But single-family houses are very prevalent back here. Condos, not so much. There are enough duplexes uh, to be worth mentioning. But if you're saying, if, uh, sorry, excuse me, if you're looking for year round living, that's where you'll likely want to focus. Now, the rest of that central area that I had drawn on before, that is a great, actually the prime area for rental income. And I'm sure you can imagine why. When folks come to town, whether you've been here yourself um, or you're just speculating, this is where all the action is. That's where people are going to pay top dollar. They're going to bring their kids, their grandkids. They don't want to have to drive all over town to get places. Uh, it can get very congested here in the summer. Uh, we go from over 10,000 year rounders up to about 120,000 people on this island throughout the summer. So it really does bubble and balloon pretty quickly. But with all the restaurants, with all the great downtown shopping, uh, specifically on Asbury Avenue, which if you haven't walked downtown Asbury before, if you haven't seen it at Christmas, especially, it is magical. People compare it to Hallmark movies um, all the time. And there are a ton of great activities always happening up and down Asbury throughout the bulk of the year. And that is especially true from September through December. There's a lot going on. It's great parades. Uh, it's a part of town where I spend a lot of time with my family in the off season. But again, there are a lot of great options here, and this is where you start to introduce uh, the condo tells. And if you haven't heard of a condo tell, I have a great video on it. Uh, the link should be up above um, if you want to learn about those. And it is a way to really have a truly hands-off investment. Uh, the returns tend to be pretty solid, all things considered. But this is where I want to be very clear with you. And if you haven't seen any of my other videos, Ocean City is not the best option if you're looking for a strict cash-on-cash cash return. In these resort markets, that's simply not going to happen very often, if at all, for a number of years. When you're thinking about buying in Ocean City or another shore market like this, again, it could be in a different state or even a different country, the rules tend to be the same. Your rental income subsidizes the cost of ownership. It's not going to necessarily cover all of your expenses, plus allow you time to spend for yourself. Again, that's not every market, but this one specifically, um, that is going to be the case. So again, central part of town, great for a lot of different reasons um, and a lot of different needs, but which part of the central area uh, appeals to you is going to be up to you and what your tastes and preferences are. One other thing to mention in central Ocean City down here, we do have the historic district. The historic district really starts down in the north end a little bit on 4th Street. And that runs from Central Avenue up to Ocean Avenue. Um, and I'm going to draw this here for you so you can see what I'm talking about. And if you're into history at all, it is a really cool place to even just walk around. Um, and it goes all the way up to just about 9th Street. Um, there's a lot of original buildings, uh, very, very old, very well kept. And if you're going to be buying in this area, you're not only going to be governed by the zoning laws and the municipal code in Ocean City, you're also going to have the historic society rules, historic district rules um, that are very strict. So if you're looking at a property here and you're picturing yourself redoing the siding and making it all modern, that's highly unlikely to ever fly. Um, so just be aware of that. Again, it's a great place to live. I know people who own there and they absolutely love it. It's got the original charm um, that a lot of Ocean City no longer has with all the development that has come over the many, many decades. Uh, it's been flourishing, but this little pocket will be preserved, hopefully, for 
ever. Um, and if you haven't been there, I highly, highly recommend that you check it out. And one other very, very quirky um, part of town that is something out of a storybook that you have to see if you haven't already. If we go down between 14th and 15th Street, if you've heard of Dollhouse Row, then you know what I'm talking about. But if you haven't, there's this little pocket of houses here on Wabern Place. And these homes are so small and they do truly look like dollhouses. Um, they're a sight to behold. People do live in them. They absolutely love them. It's a great little neighborhood back there as well. Um, and I would highly encourage you to walk past, bike past, so you can really get a sense for how cool of an area that is. Those homes are highly treasured. They rarely come up for sale. And when they do, they go very, very quickly. Now, beyond that, we are going to next touch on the Riviera. If this map will load for me. So I'm going to keep talking until it does. Now, the Riviera starts on 16th Street and goes, hey, there we go, um, and goes all the way down to Tennessee Avenue. I'm going to include Ocean Reef in there as well. So a primary focus of the Riviera and what draws a lot of people, not only again, almost all single families, but the lagoons, uh, the lagoons are very unique. This was a development. These were man-made lagoons back in the Finger Lagoons here. Um, and a lot of people absolutely love them. Uh, you don't have really any boat wakes of any kind. You can lounge out there on a raft. You're not getting swept towards the inlet or the other way when the currents are strong. So it is a really unique option for people who want waterfront life. Um, whether you have a boat or not, whether you love fishing or not, this is more of a relaxing vibe that you're not going to get elsewhere on the island. Um, back in the Bay Area here, and I'm going to zoom out again for a second, where, again, where I was fortunate enough to grow up, this is a totally different animal um, being primarily on the open bay here versus in a lagoon. Again, the whale tail lagoon down here in the gardens is highly treasured, really cool. Um, but if you own here on the bay front, on the open bay, when storms come in, the bulkheads really do get beat up. Um, but that said, again, I grew up on the open bay. I wouldn't trade those views for the world. You get the best sunsets, the best daily views, um, the wildlife that you probably have never seen in your life that you'll see. It's a really, really cool experience, uh, but very different again from what you get on the Riviera. I know people who have and clients who have moved from one to the other thinking they would like it um, and it being so different that they move back to whichever way they came from. Um, so it really is something that if you're looking just for waterfront, you need to be very careful about which experience is a better fit for you and your family because they are very different despite obviously all being on our day. Now, we go a little bit further, if I stop drawing random lines, it'd be great. We have 18th, 34th Street, and now we're starting to get in bigger chunks here. Uh, so bear with me. 18th to 34th Street, there we go, is a huge piece of property. Now within here, we have the Gold Coast. So I'm going to touch on these both at the same time. So Again, another misnomer like Beach Block, which is my favorite, um, Gold Coast. Gold Coast originally was reserved for Wesley Avenue here up in the mid to high 20s. Um, and there is a map on the Board of Realtors with the original definition, but people don't abide by it. Call anything, even if it's on Haven Avenue, the Gold Coast. Now, what is with the Gold Coast? That was originally coined because it was prime, prime, prime location and real estate. For a couple of reasons. The beaches are huge. Um, and the second reason is the lot sizes are a lot larger than normal than you'll find on the rest of the island. So the Gold Coast, as I know it, as most people know it, really ends at about 29th Street, takes you Wesley Avenue, and takes you down here to about the low 20s. That is the Gold Coast. But back to Gold Coast versus 18th to 24th. Again, they encompass a similar area, but two totally different fields. That Gold Coast, the prestige being right up 
against the boardwalk and the beach. The boardwalk here ends at 23rd Street. It's a very different feel than you'll get throughout the rest. Now, great parts of town back here. You have this awesome wildlife refuge, which I think is totally underutilized by most people. You drive by it. You didn't even know it was there. Um, you can see some really cool wildlife there. Um, we have our golf course, airport, and then, of course, um, some additional sports fields back here by the Humane Society. But all throughout this area, this is still another great area from a rental standpoint. Um, income will be great because you're still attached to the boardwalk. You're away from the heart of town and all the noise to an extent, but you can still get there really easily. So this is a great area to consider for either a second home or one that you plan to rent out as well. Now, one area that I certainly don't want to overlook, going back to our year-round potentials here, uh, takes us back to Bay Landings. So Bay Landings back here is a great neighborhood. Um, again, the only condo complex that is attached here is Nantucket, that technically qualifies to be in Bay Landings. Um, but this little horseshoe-shaped community is, is really cool. And then we have Waterway Road, of course, um, with lagoons on either side with a lot of waterfront land. We have some boat slips here as well. So there's a lot of single family folks back here, um, full-timers and also second homeowners. This really is one of the few neighborhoods. It's the first neighborhood we've really talked about where it's confined enough and small enough um, that it's really intimate. Uh, most neighbors end up knowing each other within due time. Uh, I have some friends back there who absolutely love it. Um, so that is one to check out besides what we talked about back uh, 12th to 16th Street off of Bay Avenue. This is the second area that is very heavily um, year-round based. Now, along that theme, we have Marion Park, which takes us all over here. So this is where I live personally, and I absolutely freaking love it back here. So Marion Park was developed on top of a marsh, which I'm sure you can see by all of the marsh land around us. Um, one of the main cons about Marion Park is it is flood prone for the most part. And a lot of the flooding tends to come from back here and work its way up. So if you are looking to move here full time, Marion Park is absolutely great. There's a ton of kids back here. Uh, lot sizes are larger than you would find in most parts of the island. And it's the most affordable area on the island as well, in my opinion. Uh, it's a great spot. I'm happy to talk about this for days on end. So if you have any questions or looking for anything year-round related, want to get a sense for what the neighborhood's like, you can always reach out to me. Any of the ways that you see down below in the description, I'm happy to talk about it. Um, beyond that, this is not a rental hotspot by any stretch. Rental income would not be great here because it's so far from the beach. But we do have Blue Water Marina. Um, and not only Blue Water Marina, which is a great condo complex, there is a really underutilized space here by the bridge. I'm not sure if the city has any particular plans, but this is where crew team used to uh, practice. And that was something that I fortunately was able to do in high school uh, since it was founded. Now they actually have a boathouse across the way, which is really cool. But now down here, it's just a great little bay view. Uh, there is a little dock where you can launch kayaks and paddle boards. People grab and fish back there. Little hidden gem. Um, so I would recommend checking that out as well. But uh, Marion Park's a great neighborhood. Highly, highly recommend checking that out. Last but not least, I'm going to zoom way out here because we have two remaining areas left. Number one being what is broadly called the South End. Now, the South End is expansive, but skinny. Um, as I'm sure you can see here, the island really narrows out. So while West Avenue or even Haven Avenue may have been or felt like a long walk to the beach when you're in the north part of town, that's not going to be the case where you are down here in the south. At most, you're going to be three blocks from the beach. Um, so it, it really is a cool vibe down here. It's much quieter. Um, this is not a part of town for everybody. Uh, if you like frequenting the boardwalk and everything down there, you're going to have to drive or be comfortable with a very long bike ride. But the people who take to the south end become lifers in the south and they absolutely love it and would never imagine leaving the south end. So 
There are a couple pockets of restaurants down here, specifically around 55th Street, Got a Malins, a Sack of Subs, Mike Seafood, and a few other great options, um, and some small shops too, uh, a la mode for ice cream. So there is a nice little hub down here. Again, 34th Street is our secondary hub where you do have an Acme, you have a CVS, Wawa, you have the only gas station in town, um, and plenty of other options as well. So really, it's not that far, even if you're here in the middle, whether you go one way or the other. It's a great spot. This is where our dog park is located as well. Um, there's some condo complexes strewn throughout here, but South End is mainly about really feeling that serenity that you get from getting away, truly getting away. Beaches down here are less crowded. They are larger, um, similar to the Gold Coast in that way, but it's just a quieter part of town, period. A lot of duplexes down here, not as many single family homes as you would have in really any other pocket of town. Uh, rental income is decent, right? Places will rent, absolutely. But your return on investment here is not going to be nearly as good as it would be further north, um, whether you're talking Central Ocean City or in that 18 to 24 corridor. Uh, but down here, we also get to Corson's Inlet State Park, which is really cool. There are some trails back here. Make sure you not only take bug spray, but ticks are very prevalent. So please, please check yourself if you decide to walk through the paths there, um, heard too many stories, people being totally unaware that there are going to be ticks there. Um, so please prepare yourself if you're going to go for that adventure. It is really, really cool. There's another launch dock down here for jet skis. Um, but the grand finale, we have what is called Ocean City Homes. Now, this is a very unique development, similar to Marion Park, um, in that it was developed... Uh, back in the 70s. And it's primarily single family homes back here. But what you'll see on rare occasions when they do come up for sale is homes that are actually duplexes. They look like single family homes, but there is a secondary unit up top. So you could have the opportunity truly, whether it's to have kind of an in-law suite or a separate living space entirely for your friends and family, you could choose to rent one unit and use the other for yourself. This opens up some different options that you won't get in the rest of the island. Um, there are a couple condo associations back here as well, condo complexes, I should say, that are worth checking out. But if you're going to be down this end of the island, you have to be comfortable with where you are and really understanding what it's going to take to get to the things that you may or may not care about, whether that's the boardwalk, um, Asbury Avenue, et cetera. But let's go macro level here for a second. Again, I promised you that I would talk about exactly why Ocean City is so different from the other islands. Um, and that's one of the most prevalent questions that I get. And really, it comes down to nostalgia. Again, I mentioned at the beginning of this video, every island has its own flavor, its own culture. But what I find more often than not is twofold. Not only is it the nostalgia factor from people who have been coming here for years or decades or generations, but the other most prevalent my opinion, the biggest draw of Ocean City over any of these other islands is the family-friendly nature. And again, some of that has to do with the nostalgia. People remember being here as kids um, or bringing their grandkids, whatever the case is, but it's a dry town. There is no alcohol sold in town at all. So it brings a totally different, I'll say, clientele um, into town. And it's a vibe that you just won't feel on any of the other islands. So those are the two main factors, the nostalgia factor and the fact that it is the most family friendly place in the area, bar none, uh, whether that's the dry town aspect, whether that is the different rides and the boardwalk that we have that are super kid friendly, all the events that Ocean City puts on, it really is a great place to consider moving, whether it's full time, part time, or whether you're just going to come for your week or two and prefer to subsidize your cost of enjoying ownership here in Ocean City. So that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed my initial exploring of that tool of actually going over a map. If you liked that, make sure you hit like down below and drop a comment telling me if you liked this style of video or not, as I always appreciate your feedback. So that's it for today. I appreciate you hanging out with me and I'll see you on the next video.